If you want to learn how I turn a Figma website design into a functional WordPress website, then this is the video for you. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I turn one of my actual real client websites from a Figma mockup and how I make it functional on the platform WordPress. One of the questions I get all the time is, what website platform should I be using? Not only from other designers, but also from my clients themselves. So website platforms are really a tricky one to pick because there's so many out there nowadays and it's kind of hard to know which one would be the best for your business. However, I can share with you guys a few of my tips of how I kind of determine which platform we should go with. WordPress is in my opinion, one of the best platforms for service-based businesses and businesses that are going to be using a blog. WordPress is known for being a really good blog platform, so that is why I typically recommend it for clients that are going to be doing this. And this client that I'll be showing you today does have a blog, so I'm going to be using WordPress. She already has her WordPress set up and everything, which is super helpful. But one of the things to know about WordPress is it's a little more advanced. It requires just a little bit of learning. It's a little learning curve. And also you want to make sure that the hosting platform that you're using for WordPress is really good and not super slow, not like a bogged down server because that can really affect your website. So WordPress is one of my favorite platforms, but there's quite a few things to know about it. And then there's also website platforms like Showit or Squarespace or I'm blanking on the other Shopify and all of those really are best for different types of industries. So I would say that Showit is best for designers, service-based businesses, maybe not the best for shops. In fact, I would recommend all e-commerce platforms websites are under Shopify because that's the best platform for managing your shipping and Shopify really just has all the things you're going to need to have on a shop. You can really grow into your shop. So typically always recommend e-commerce platforms under Shopify and like I said, show it's best for like designers and really artsy kind of businesses. And Squarespace is also a really great option, but I feel like they're a little pricier and some customization does require coding. So those are just a little, a little brief description of each platform. Like I mentioned, this client, we're using WordPress because she does have a blog and she already has WordPress. So it's a win-win situation. She already knows how to use it and I will be showing her how to really use it with a, the plugin that I'll be using, which is Divi. I like Divi for drag and drop building. It makes it easy to edit visually on the front end. So that's what I'll be showing you guys today. So I'm gonna show you guys how I set up the website under the hosting platform, which I typically will design my clients' websites on my hosting platform. And then when we're ready to launch, I transfer it over to theirs. That just ensures that I don't risk them taking the website and not finishing their payments. And also I wanna make sure we're under a temporary domain until we're ready to go live. So I'm going to show you how I set that up under my hosting account and then I'm just going to design the homepage with you guys to show you a little bit about how to do this and how I like to utilize Figma to help me. So without further ado, let's hop on over to my screen. This is the website design that me and my client have been collaborating on. It has all of these different pages, but I'm going to be showing you specifically how to kind of just set up your WordPress and how to start developing the homepage. So this is what it looks like when I present the website and this is what my clients have been seeing. Um, as you can see, I have her name up here, which she's been awesome and leaving her comments on here so that we can collaborate. It's one of my favorite parts about Figma. Um, but her website is a blog, so this is the mock-up of how I was picturing it looking based on all the inspiration sites that she has sent me. So we have this to reference. I'm going to close this presentation here, um, and then I'll be exporting a lot of these. And guys, I have to be honest with you, I am not very organized with my Figma. I kind of just design and go crazy with it. It's one of the things I really want to work on more of is keeping these organized and having specific names, but 
anyway i just wanted to preface that because you'll probably see on the left side here it's really messy um anyway what we're gonna do first is i use siteground for all of my wordpress hosting i think it's best customer service i've had a lot of my clients websites on here and they've never had any issues i think that siteground is just a really great platform so this is typically what i recommend i definitely have had a lot of great luck with it in terms of the customer service and the speed of the website so i do recommend it but what we're going to do is we're going to go to the websites tab here and i have a lot of websites already installed on here um, because I do have the plan where I can have unlimited website installations, but even though you can have unlimited installations of your websites, I would try to not have that many because it can slow down your server and just make each website a little bit slower. So I'm definitely going to go through these and clean them out. But what we're going to do is we're going to go up top here to new website and I'm going to select temporary domain because that's where we're going to be building it and then it's super easy to migrate it after using a plugin or um, just using the Divi import and export settings. So I'm going to say start a new website and we're also going to select WordPress here and I'm just going to do a quick little login for this website so I don't forget it. and let's continue and finish i don't really want to add anything on it should be perfect the way it is and usually this takes some time to just load it all in for me set up the database all of that so i'm going to let this load for a minute and then we will continue with the installation usually while this is happening i'll head on over to my elegant themes and make sure I have my Divi account downloaded. So I'm going to do that real quick while we're waiting. Divi is basically a theme. They also have a Divi Builder plugin. I always use the theme. I've never just used the plugin on its own, but I'm guessing that you could probably use the plugin on any website without having to load in a whole theme. So I, I should definitely play around with that more, but I usually always use the theme. So I'm gonna download the Divi theme and what we're gonna wanna do under account and under API keys, username and API key, we're gonna wanna create a new API key for this client. So I'm gonna put her brand name so I don't forget it. And we're gonna copy that because we're gonna need that as soon as we get into the WordPress account. So yeah, sometimes this can take a little bit of time, so I'll give it some time and I'll come back to showing you guys how to continue. Okay, the WordPress was just installed, so now you'll see this screen here if you're using SiteGround. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the admin side of WordPress, which it'll load up this starter thing to help you get it set up, but I'm going to exit the wizard here and just go straight to the dashboard. So this is what the dashboard looks like for WordPress. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to appearance themes and we are going to load in Divi right away because that's that's the main theme that we're going to be using. So you can use the zip file and just drag it in here and install it. Usually this takes a few minutes as well, but um, once it's installed, we can start getting all the global settings perfected. So you're gonna to wanna to activate it as soon as it finishes with that. And then the next thing that I always do, just so I don't forget it, is to go to theme options, updates, and add in that API key and username. Save changes, perfect. Okay, so now it's time to get all the global settings figured out. So the first thing I do is load in the logo. So I'm going to just go over here to my Figma file and export everything from here. Usually I would rename all of these for SEO purposes because sometimes having like keywords for your image files can really help. Um, but for the purpose of this video, don't want it to be super long. So I'm just gonna load these all in and show you how I set up the WordPress. So I'm gonna select this main logo for this logo here. And then we're also going to go through and update all of the color palettes. So 
I'm going to reference my Figma by clicking out into empty space and getting each of these colors. Okay, so sometimes in Divi, you'll be left with like a color that's super random. Usually I will go and select just plain white or black. That way I have that option. But yeah, sometimes you're left with a few extra colors. So just find some colors that you want to have just in case you need to reference like white or anything like that. Um, but that those are all the colors loaded in. So that is perfect. I'm going to save changes. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to visit site and we'll see it just has the basic WordPress footer and header loaded in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to hover over to my WordPress theme customizer and we're going to set the typography, the fonts for the headings and the paragraph. So under header and navigation, you'll see the um, Actually, it's right under here, general settings, typography. You'll be able to select the header font. So I'm going to be using, you can always reference your Figma if you need to, but we are using Playfair Display, which is a free font. So that's going to be really easy to load in and find. And it should be right here. And then also I like to reference the size that I have set in Figma, which is size 48 for the heading also select from the global colors here what you want for the link for the font and then also what you want the font color to be which we are actually going to use black for the font and we're also going to use it for the header text font as well and we're going to save that we'll show you guys the code that i do use to set the h1 font size h2 font size to really have all of that globally set up so that the client, if they add any new paragraphs, they won't have to worry about changing any of that. Um, but before we go too far, I this just caught my eye. It says not secure up here. I prefer to design on sites that are secure because if I send my client this link, it's gonna load up really weird for them. So under SiteGround, you go to security, SSL manager, and we are going to just do Let's Encrypt here to get an SSL certificate, which will secure the website. I would want to do this now because it'll probably log me out of WordPress and I just want to get this over with so I don't have to do it in the middle of designing. Um, so let's get that done. Okay, so the SSL manager um, finished its job. Basically, it says active now. So then I went over to HTTPS enforce and I turned that on. I always do this for all of my clients. So now that's installed. Um, now I'm just going to go over to WordPress, refresh it. And like I said, it'll log you out. It does this every time because the permalinks and everything change a little bit. Um, but no big deal. We can log back right in really easily. Okay, so we have most of the theme settings set up. So the next thing that I always do is build the header and the footer. So I go over to Divi Theme Builder and we're going to build a global header. It really depends. Sometimes I feel like I actually prefer the WordPress navigation settings over the Divi settings. So I sometimes like to try that out first and to really make it easier to design, I usually go to appearance, menus, and add in the primary menu so that we actually have some links to, to play with. So let's do that first. And if you don't have any of the pages created yet, you can just go to custom links, do a hashtag, and um, put the name of the menu item. Add to menu this will just have it click into nothing so kind of a nice placeholder option so i'm just going to add in each one of these that way we have something to see the navigation with cool so we have all of those in here and as you can see on my figma design i have these icons here which i actually have something very similar on my personal website pretty much the same navigation 
this is using Divi Pixel, so I might have to install that for her just to get these icons up here. And I also can go into my own website and see how I did that. But um, I just wanted to load all these in here first. So let's save the menu. And then let's actually go to the main website here. And we're just going to play around with seeing how we can adjust the navigation using WordPress settings, not Divi settings. So I'm going to go to header and navigation, header format, and you can do centered, centered inline logo. All these options so this is how we have it on the figma design and i'm gonna go back don't worry i'll fix the fonts later um but then in the primary menu bar you can put make full width if you want it to be um, you can also change the height of the menu and you can make the logo even bigger and I do have code that allows some space in between these two. If that's something that your client really wants, that's definitely possible. Um, and then, yeah, so right here we can change the fonts and everything. So I'm going to do all capitalized. And we're also going to check the font size, which is 16. 16. I actually like the way it looked at 14 better. And then I'm also going to give it a little bit of spacing. Never mind. I like how that looks. And then we're going to change the text color to black. Change that opacity. And I want to make the active link color red. And the menu line color red because just in case if she adds any sub menu items, we can have that um, as a red line there. And then you can do any sort of animation if you want. But that is looking perfect. I think I'm going to actually use the WordPress menu settings because it's way more, um, what do you call it, responsive than the Divi menu settings, which it's definitely possible, but I did want to use this one. And then you can add different elements if you want to show social icons. Um, there's a way to do this through code, which is most likely what I'll do to add those here, or I'll just use Divi Pixel. So I'm going to exit out of this now, and let's go to the Divi theme builder and build the footer, because that is something I will be doing in here. So when you click add global footer, you're just going to say build global footer, and we are going to start building it from scratch. So let me get back in here. Okay, so it's blink, which is perfect. So we're gonna click on the settings here for the section and we're gonna change the background to dark because that is what I have over here on Figma. And now since we have technically three sections here, I'm gonna go into the row settings and I'm gonna do two small sections on the side here and I think one big one like that. That way it's responsive and it doesn't look weird when this the page is like shrunk because if you have an empty section, it might look a little weird when you shrink the page. So this is called company. And then you can easily just duplicate that, drag it over and call this one categories. And I probably should have fixed the font settings before copying it, but we're just gonna, I wanna do like global font settings so you don't have to do this every time. But if you wanna fix the text settings, you could go in here and either under content, instead of paragraph, you can change this to like H3 and go into H3 settings here and change it that way. So it really depends how you want to do it, but I think using the global code so that you don't have to do that every time is ideal. It's like the best way to do it. Um, and then we're going to change this to categories. Perfect. So we'll add all that text in after, but on this side, I'm going to do an image and we are going to go select that logo that we already loaded in. And you're probably like, this looks giant. So what we're going to do is under the design tab, we're going to shrink this down and we're also going to align it to the very right. 
So as you can see, there's a lot of space on the left and the right. That is because this right here, the row itself is not full width. So you can change that by going to design sizing and increasing that if you want. Usually I put like 100% if I want it to reach the edges, but I think I want it to be like 80%. And yeah, usually that kind of fixes everything for me. So that is how I do it. Now I'm gonna click save. And another thing to always keep in mind is to always check the mobile side of everything. Since this is a really simple footer, I think this is gonna look fine on mobile, but once we get all those categories in for the menu, it might change things. So I'm gonna hit save settings and let's go check it out. So now it's gonna have this footer for every page, um, which is actually perfect. That's exactly how I was envisioning it. So I am going to basically just start designing the homepage. And since this is a blog, it's going to be a little different. I'm most likely going to use a theme builder and build a template based on the blog. So I'll show you guys how to do that exactly. But what you're going to want to do is basically select blog here and design a blog page and how you want that to look. And then once you have that all set and we have some of the posts imported in, then we'll be able to kind of customize the home page. So I am going to import some of those blogs and then I'll come right back and show you guys how to do the rest.
to blog websites and like setting up templates and just like making the categories and everything really easy to um, edit and maintain and stuff. So the way to make this easy using Divi is going to Theme Builder. And as you can see, I started it here, but you can create pages for specific categories. So on my Figma, I have a category design for style. Um, so what I would do is basically just build how I want this page to look for the category. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this real quick, just so you know that instead of just having a main blog page that you can customize each one, so what we can do here actually, I'm going to delete this, is to put blog or yeah, you could do either blog um, and then just select style here for that one to load only and it'll basically load things in when we have more posts. But another reason I wanted to create specific category pages for the blog is because each category page is going to have a quote at the top that is specific to that category so that is going to be up top here and it's also going to have a background color of red and spacing around it good amount of spacing around it and i'm going to copy over that quote just to show you guys kind of how this is looking and how I would do this if I like basically how I'm doing it for the blog and then you're always going to want to make sure to hit that H2 there and center it and then I'm also going to add the author right below in H3 center it and then always go back to here and change the color. I might even go to H4. Perfect. So you can also increase the spacing by dragging these down if you want. And then one other thing I want to do is actually add a title up top here that says the category page, which this one is. Oops. This one is called style. So let's drag that up top here. And I'm going to center it as well. Perfect. So that's the reason I wanted to do these category pages. But this is just an example of how I would do it. So I have those, that specific category loading in and let's save it so to do this all you would have to do in your theme builder is to create a new template under that specific post category so i wanted to show you guys that because that's an important thing that i'll be doing with her specific website all right guys so i developed a good amount of the home page but one of the things i wanted to show you was how to set the code and the settings for all of the fonts on your website so i just copied it from my personal website and i'm going to paste it in here this is what the code looks like but we're just going to need to edit it with those specific font names so i think i'm going to continue using this free google font for her body font just so it's easy to load on safari and chrome and all the things um but we are going to need to change the font color so um, since the, all the fonts are in black I'm just going to copy this over make sure to have that hashtag there and then for this one here we are going to change this to play fair display you want to make sure that you spell it exactly how it is um, on all of the platforms so Sometimes I have to like reference it to just make sure I spelled it correctly. Play fair display. Okay. And then I'm going to actually change this to serif. That's just like the backup font that it'll load in for me. For some reason it's saying that I did something wrong. 
I'm gonna have to like load, copy this over and see why it's saying I did that wrong. Interesting, okay. Play fair display. And we're gonna also change this to that font color. And you can also change the font sizing here if you want to. And you know, actually we could even remove body in H1 since that's already set in the theme settings, but I'm just gonna continue doing it here to maintain consistency as to like where I'm holding all of this information. And I'm just gonna copy this over now for all of these H2, H3, all those. So H2 will be that, and we're actually going to decrease this font size to, and you know what, I think I have a different font for H2, but I actually like the way it's been looking on the website, so I'm going to do that, and two, three, four, five, six, the font color, let's also paste this in, we could change the font size to like 18 for this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then for this one, we can go back to using Overpass. And this can be more so the font that will be like the fallback font for like um, categories and stuff like that. So let's put 16. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I don't think I'm even going to need an H5. So I'm just going to remove that one. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save changes and we will we should be able to see those changes made on the front end. Okay, so this is what the website's looking like. So just to double check and see if it's actually applying that code, I'm gonna go to Visual Builder. I'm gonna basically just add a section here and add some text. And as you can see, it loaded in the font for the paragraph, but let's test this out. We have heading two. Let's try heading three. Oops. Okay, it looks like it's loading all of it in, which is perfect. And then heading four is what we have for reverting back to um, the overpass, which is the sans serif text. So that is how I apply the code typically to maintain consistency with all of my fonts. But yeah, this is how the website's looking. I'm super excited about it. I'm gonna have to code a few things to make these images the size like they are here. Um, so that will require some coding. And I tried to change it in the media settings, but some of these things do require just a few lines of like, even just CSS code. Um, so yeah, this is how it's looking. I'm super excited to continue designing it and putting it, bring it to, bringing it to life. But I hope that this was helpful. But that is how I design websites on Figma and how I turn those into functional websites on to WordPress. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it helped you out, maybe answered some questions that you might have on how you take a design and make it actually work and what that process really looks like. I know it sounds like two different steps, but trust me when I say that it's so much easier to edit on Figma than it is to edit a already built out website. You want to make sure that you take those steps so you can collaborate with your client so you can make it a really collaborative experience and also get all those edits done before the development phase. So really hope this video helped you out. If it did, I would appreciate it so much if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down below, and I will see you guys in my next video.